Plugseeker. Good morning, it's the Plugseeker here. Welcome to another episode. I'm going to be uh, going today to the Low City um, Annual Conference. Um, and this is uh, held by Greenfleet. And it's going to be held at the Kempton Park Racecourse, so which will be a nice venue. So I'm very pleased to have been invited to this and uh, I'm looking forward to having a look around and seeing how electric cars are being adopted by uh, companies who are using them uh, in their fleets. Uh, and there may be an opportunity possibly to do a test drive, who knows. So um, hopefully I'll uh, get to have a look around at some uh, electric vans and other uh, commercial vehicles and uh, I'll uh, let you know how I got on on the way back. The event was held at the Kempton Park Racecourse in Sunbury on Thames and I'm pleased to note that when I arrived there were four 7 kilowatt Type 2 chargers from the Polar Network and all, all of these were working fine so I'm, I was able to charge while I was at the event. Later on an i3 also charged with me. The event itself was hosted by Greenfleet Magazine and I'd like to thank him very much for inviting me to attend. Greenfleet Magazine is a publication which encourages the use of sustainable transport, particularly in commercial fleets. During the day, the conference was led by the Low City Group. Now, this was not a group which I had come across before. Low City is an industry-led program which is due to run until the mid-2020s. As I understand it, they have a mandate to help freight and fleets in the commercial sector to reduce air pollution and carbon emissions. So it was really interesting to meet so many fascinating people from the commercial sector. The huge amounts of miles driven by some of these companies was an incredible opportunity, not just to save carbon emissions and air pollution, but also incredible way of saving money in these companies. The event was quite well attended, and in addition to the interesting lectures, there were 27 exhibitors in the lobby, which I had a chance to speak to as well. One of the people I had a chance to speak to was the representative from EN Genie. Now, EN Genie, as I found out, is a new UK network of rapid chargers, and I'll put a little bit of information on them here. Essentially, they are a pay-as-you-go network of rapid chargers, which do not require any membership. These rapid chargers are activated with debit card contactless or Apple Pay. So obviously this is a new network which we will have to watch and see how it develops. And while we're on the subject of chargers, I also met up with the people from Elmtronics. They are a UK based charging company which make charging units both for domestic and for commercial customers. In particular, I really liked their sophisticated touchscreen dual type 2 charger. This could be activated with either an RFID card or an app. Now another stand which was very interesting was the BD Auto stand. Now the BD Auto company is originally based I believe from Turkey. The BD Auto group are active in the conversion of electric drivetrains into commercial small and large vans. Interestingly the BD Auto group have been converting diesel into electric vehicles since the 1990s. Their vans come in various sizes, but one of the most impressive that was showcased on their stand was the e Decato Cargo. And I'll put a little bit of information here all about this monstrous electric van. This 62 kilowatt battery electric van has a payload of up to 1.2 tons. And I'm sure these vans by the BD Auto Group have incredible potential for commercial fleets. However, if we're talking monster electric vehicles, the prize really has to go to this one. This 26 ton rubbish collection truck is called Electra and runs purely on lithium ion batteries. Sarah Maxwell from City of London gave a brilliant talk on how Electra is being trialled in parts of London, in particular around the Smithfield meat market, where apparently this 26-tonne behemoth electric vehicle has gone down really well with the local traders. This rubbish collection truck is the first of its kind to be fully electric, both for the driving and for the compression of the waste. As well as in London, it is also being trialled at two other city locations in the UK. It can complete a 10-hour shift, driving 20 to 30 miles a day. And at the end of a shift, it is charged overnight. 
and it was great to see a presentation from a representative of IKEA. The well-known furniture store is, I'm pleased to say, embarking on a project of electrifying much of its fleet. This has started with electrification of some of its vans in London, Sheffield and its Exeter branch. And this is of course in addition to IKEA providing rapid chargers in some of its UK car parks, notably in association with Ecotricity and the Electric Highway. There is such a rapid charger in my local IKEA in Croydon. In the London hubs, IKEA have trialled using the eFuso truck. This, I was later to find out, was one of the electric trucks being made by the Mercedes-Benz Group. Later on, I was lucky enough to have the opportunity to talk to the Mercedes-Benz representative. Mercedes-Benz have been producing a range of electric trucks for the commercial sector. Two of them really stood out, one of them being the Fuso e Canter. The Fuso e Canter is a 7.5 tonne fully electric truck. It is, I believe, the one being used by IKEA in some of its London hubs. I will post here some details about this amazing electric vehicle. It has a 82.8 kilowatt lithium battery and can be charged in about an hour to 80%. It has a range of over 62 miles or 100 kilometers. And there are now about 10 of these vehicles in operation at the time of this video. However, Mercedes-Benz has even bigger vehicles on the horizon. Cue the Mercedes-Benz E-Actros. The E-Actros will be a huge heavy-duty truck with a two- or three-axle vehicle capable of carrying 18 or 25 tonnes respectively. The E-Actros electric truck has a total of 11 lithium-ion batteries with a total capacity of 240 kilowatt-hours. There are two 125 kilowatt motors capable of producing 485 newton meters of torque. These trucks can be charged overnight on a 22 kilowatt DC charger in about 11 hours. However, they also have the option of 80 kilowatt DC charging, which can charge them up to full power in about three hours. So logistically, you could be unloading this car at the destination and charging it up ready for the next trip at the same time. These amazing E-Actos trucks are currently on trial with customers in Germany and Switzerland. Let's hope we start to see these on the UK roads in the near future. And while we're on the subject of huge electric vehicles, here's the biggest Rex you've ever seen. It kind of puts your BMW i3 to shame. This is the Teva range extended truck. It is in fact a hybrid diesel electric truck. Now, yes, I know it does have a diesel engine, but hear me out. It is also a range extended system with a 74 kilowatt hour battery pack. When tested on the Millbrook proving ground in a simulated delivery cycle, it was able to achieve 158 kilometers or just under 100 miles on fully electric. Therefore, this vehicle is best used for deliveries of around 80 to 150 miles to optimize the most electric travel as possible. However, it is a range extended vehicle and one of its advantages to commercial fleets is that should it be necessary to do a very long distance trip on short notice, it can still manage when filled with diesel, a combined diesel electric range of around a thousand kilometers or just over 600 miles. Now, perhaps one might say that as a diesel hybrid, they're perhaps not quite as ecological as a fully electric vehicle. However, considering they can do up to 100 miles as fully electric, and the number of miles these vehicles do, there is still a considerable saving in carbon footprint and air pollution to be made by such vehicles as this. And with the ability to do longer journeys if necessary on diesel, this may give commercial operators the confidence to buy such vehicles. Furthermore, the ability to drive in cities on fully electric mode will greatly reduce the street level air pollution created by HGVs. The Teva range extended truck does not currently support rapid charging. However, on a 22 kilowatt three phase industrial charger can charge up to full in about 3.5 hours. So all around quite an impressive vehicle and hopefully we will again see more of these too. 
Now, another interesting presentation at the conference was one by LDV. Now, LDV used to be Leyland DAF Vans. However, this has changed hands several times over the years and is now, in 2010, part of SAIC Motors in China. Now, LDV make a wide variety of commercial vehicles, but the LDV Maxus EV80 all-electric zero-emissions van really stood out as an excellent-looking EV. And the EV80 van comes in several different versions, including even a multi-seat minibus. It has a 56 kilowatt hour battery pack and an estimated range of 120 miles. It has a 92 kilowatt motor with a torque of 320 newton meters. And it is this van which IKEA are using for deliveries in their branch in Exeter. And LDV has more electric vehicle vans in the pipeline. For example, the EV31 will have a 53 kilowatt hour battery with a range of up to 200 miles. And LDV also have a plan for a 3.5 ton electric van, which would be called the SV63. Now another presentation that really caught my eye was the one by Alpha Electric Consultancy Firm. Alpha Electric do a comprehensive tailored assessment of a commercial fleet to look at its feasibility for transition to electric vehicles. This includes looking at how far individual vehicles travel and also the local infrastructure for charging. They can advise the companies on the feasibility of a fully electric fleet or possibly plug-in hybrid vehicles. They can also suggest which type of chargers they may wish to install and have a partnership with Chargemaster. So in this way, Alpha Electric will help provide commercial fleets with the confidence they need to transition to electric vehicles, showing them that it's not only possible, but obviously more importantly, it's in their financial interests to go down a route of electrification. And so given the number of miles driven by these fleets, I really hope that we see more firms go down this route in the future. Now, a great example of a company which has gone fully electric was the G-Newt Cargo Company, which I had a chance to chat with at the conference. G-Newt has 100 electric vehicles, which I understand makes it the largest electric delivery fleet in the world. In association with EO Charging, they have deployed 63 electric chargers across their two sites in London. One interesting thing about the G-Newt delivery vans is that they use ENV200 Nissan vans, which are specially altered by a company called Voltaire to make them significantly taller with a larger capacity. By altering the chassis, Voltaire make these vans tall enough to walk into and obviously increase their delivery capabilities. g are a fully electric parcel delivery service and delivered an amazing 3 million parcels in London last year. The amount of electric miles saved by this company is immense and I hope we see a few more delivery companies going down this route in the future. In addition to the interesting presentations and stands, there was a chance afterwards in the afternoon to look around some electric vehicles outside. Starting with this, the Edicato Cargo by BD Autos, a 100% electric van. As you can see, in this case it is being used by DHL. And I had a chance to walk around the massive Teva truck. This impressive diesel electric hybrid is able to do 100 miles on pure electric. And at this size certainly puts your BMW Rex to shame. And from the very biggest EVs to the very smallest, this was MaxVac, a company specializing in small EVs for street cleaning. In particular, they were displaying this, the Electra 2.0. And this was my opportunity to do my first test drive. And with excellent EVs like this, I'm sure they're going to clean up. No? Okay, well, leaving aside the bad dad jokes, this was an excellent little electric vehicle. It comes with either a lithium ion battery or a lead acid battery and can manage about nine hours of operating time. This little EV has a 1.5 meter cubed rear dumping waste container and a 400 liter water tank. But don't be expecting any fast launches with this EV. Its 9 kilowatt motor can only manage a top speed of 15 miles an hour. And this 
is its big brother. This is the CityCat 2020 EV by Boucher Municipals. This is a fully electric road sweeping vehicle with a 56 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery. It will charge up in two to three hours using a type two socket and a 22 kilowatt onboard charger. This is the first fully electric road sweeper in the two meter cubed volume range. And hold on to your hats, this 40 kilowatt motor will get you a top speed of around 25 miles an hour. The next EV that caught my attention was the K20 van mounted cherry picker. So basically here, a fully electric Nissan ENV200 has been modified to have a 10 meter raised platform. The K20 is produced by a company called CPL, which is a specialist in raised platforms. The raised platform basket can hold up to 120 kilograms. And in a city, this can have multiple uses. For example, the maintenance of street lamps. And interestingly, when I lifted up the charging flap, in addition to the normal Chadmo and Type 1, this also appeared to have a third commando socket as well. As always, it was great to meet the team from greenmopeds.com. They are a UK company specializing in zero emission, 100% electric mopeds. And I have to admit, I was rather taken with this classical styled Super Soco TC in green. This bike comes with one or two removable batteries, which can be charged on a three pin plug. They take about seven to eight hours to charge and each battery can provide a range of about 40 miles. This 1500 watt bike has a potential top speed of 45 miles per hour, but may be capped at 28 miles per hour to maintain its moped status in the UK. Also on display was this lovely 1200 watt Super Soco TS. And at a price of just under £2,400 for the TS and just under £2,900 for the TC, who wouldn't be tempted by one of these lovely bikes? The next vehicle I had a chance to look at was one which had been discussed previously in one of the earlier presentations. This would be the LDV Maxus EV80, a real workhorse electric van. And this brilliant zero emission van comes in several different configurations. This even includes a 15 seated minibus. And finally, the last stand I visited was that of Bradshaw Electric Vehicles. This company makes a range of two seated electric mini road vehicles. As you can see, they come in several different forms to suit different jobs, including a pickup truck, waste collection, and a cage tipper. This particular vehicle is a Goop Hill G4 pickup truck. And I'd like to thank the demonstrator from Bradshaw EVs, who was kind enough not only to show me all his vehicles, but allowed me to take this particular model for a test drive around the grounds of the Kempton Racecourse. And for such a practical looking EV, I was quite surprised how nippy the torque was. As with all of the vehicles in this range, this is a zero emission, 100% electric vehicle. It is powered by a nine kilowatt hour lithium battery with a range of about 49 to 59 miles. Now it may look small, but this little EV is capable of carrying a working payload of about 1.2 tons. Furthermore, it can also tow on site about 3.5 tons, or alternatively on the road, 1.4 tons. Its 10 kilowatt motor is capable of a top speed of about 31 miles per hour. Charging on a 240 volt, 12 amp supply takes about 4.5 hours to reach full. So all in all, I thought these were great electric vehicles and I'm sure they must have a massive range of potential applications. Now there were other great presentations and electric vehicles presented during this day, more than you could ever really fit into one video review. The ones I've included here were the ones that really stood out to me or I found particularly interesting. However, I will include in the show notes some links to some other further information. So yeah, um, obviously most of my videos usually are aimed at looking at passenger cars and what they're like to drive and own and charge but today was an interesting step into another world to look at the commercial uh, market and uh, what they're trying to do to electrify and green some of their fleets so thank you very much to green fleet for inviting me to this uh, day today i really quite enjoyed it and it was an interesting insight into a different side of uh, driving which uh, i don't usually see so i hope you enjoyed this episode 
And please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and please share it on social media like Twitter and Facebook. That would be really helpful to my channel. Really appreciate it if you could do that. And please like this video if you enjoyed it. So I'm going to head off home now. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. This is the Plug Seeker signing out. Happy charging.